This series is made possible by all of my patrons. More about that at the end of the video. Hello and welcome to another installment of Hoya Summer Camp and today we will talk all about cuttings. So we will talk about how to take cuttings from Hoyas, what to select, how to decide how long, how big the cutting should be, maybe some tips on what you should avoid when buying a Hoya cutting and of course how to root Hoya cuttings. That's a lot of Hoya in one sentence. So this will be a more practical installment of the summer camp and I think that also means it will be the most unhinged because whenever I go off the script it's like very very unhinged so you're welcome I'm glad that you are here in my opinion it is very important to know how to root Hoya cuttings even if you make a practice that you buy rooted Hoyas at all times because you never really know what is gonna happen with your plant roots can just die for seemingly no reason but it's always with some reason and you need to know how to rescue your plants so even if you buy Hoyas rooted all the time I you know trust me you will absolutely get to a point when you will have to root a Hoya cutting yourself unless maybe you're growing one or two Hoyas but when we get into the ten and hundreds you absolutely need this knowledge it's not very difficult at all I think a lot of people get scared for no reason and I do understand that but I think it's very important to get over this fear pretty quickly I don't see the reason why even as a novice you shouldn't learn right away how to root Hoya cuttings because again it can come in very very handy and of course you just have a much much wider selection when you decide to buy Hoya cuttings unrooted because a lot of the times that is how Hoyas will be sold at least here in Europe a lot of the times you will be buying unrooted Hoya cuttings I'm not really sure about the US but I think there as well so this is again something that is great to have on your hand in your pocket whatever the metaphor or expression there is there are many 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 methods in which you can root Hoya cuttings many potting mixes that will do well for rooting your Hoya cuttings and in my opinion no method is better than the other a lot of the times I see in the groups question what is the best way to root a Hoya and to me whatever you are comfortable with in these past five or god knows how many years I have rooted Hoyas in many many different ways and I'm comfortable with most of them there are some things that I don't really like and those usually are related but you know to the space that I have available and we will get into that a bit later but really all the methods can work really well some Hoyas are more specific and harder to root but because this is a beginner series I don't think you will be dealing with those however I think I will mention them just so we can kind of work on some expectations how quickly this will happen. I do have some Hoyas that I needed to cut two weeks ago and I'm sorry to the people who ordered those Hoyas from me if you're watching the channel. I am taking your cuttings right now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. First we will take cuttings of my Hoya Pandurata. This is Hoya Pandurata from Vietnam. I need to take two cuttings from this plant and I was selling them as one node two leaf cuttings but I think actually one of them will be three leaves because it just so happens that it works well for me of course you will need scissors don't use a scalpel for this no no absolutely not this is not an aeroid you should sterilize your scissors with alcohol you can just wipe them with alcohol before you use and ideally between each plant you will wipe them down with alcohol to be quite honest with you I don't do that I don't do that and I've never had any issues but you can transfer if your plant has a virus but my plants don't we were just gonna take one big cutting and then divide it into two I selected this vine that is kind of already cut you can see we have several vines here this is a detour here or digression when I take Hoya cuttings I try to maintain a balanced plan so for example if this branch was shorter you can choose to cut the entire branch but I like to kind of go around and keep them all similar length and of course then they will also branch out but this one is shorter because I did take cuttings before from it it's actually several days ago so I will just continue and eliminate the entire branch because you know it's gonna take me a while to go around and get to that length of this branch this can of course work as one cutting again it really depends how you market your cutting or if you're taking a cutting for yourself this will be a perfect cutting very easy to root but I will cut it once again here so you can kind of see there one will be a cutting with one node and two leaves and the other one will be two nodes and three leaves and I do try to go as close as I can to the node without of course cutting into the node and the reason for that is because you do want to give your cutting the most 
stem that you can give your cutting. Sometimes it will be challenging because some Hoyas do have sort of this compact growth and the stem will be short. In that case, I would take off a couple of leaves depending on the Hoya or of course offer to root the cutting myself because you're just gonna have more luck when you root the cuttings in your home right away versus sending them for someone else to root. We will let these dry. Usually I will let them for a couple of hours, no longer than that. There's no need for you to leave them overnight. So just a couple of hours and then we are gonna take care of them. We will also be cutting my Hoya Denisi Frida. This is also a rogue branch here. So we're taking off the entire branch. Again, this can work as one cutting or you can cut it. I mean, you can really cut this into four cuttings and root two leaves and one node. And this is like a good size to kind of stop with two leaves, one node, right? If the leaves are smaller than this, I would always offer them as two nodes, four leaves, or two nodes, three leaves. We're gonna leave this dry out because we don't want to do anything with it right away. And this Hoya is actually a good example of where I would not take a cutting. You can see here, we have this growing vine and it's quite long actually. Let me see if I can unwrap that without damage. It seems that's not gonna be possibility. Of course, I'm going to try and damage it. Hoya Denisi is a fast growing Hoya. You can see we have quite a bit of vine here. You never want to take a cutting if the leaves are not mature. They are most likely not going to make it. You need to wait for the leaves to mature, so they need to be firm to the touch if it's a Hoya that does make firm leaves. Denisi Frida is a thin-leaved Hoya, but she will, you know, there will be firmness to the leaves. You will definitely be able to distinguish between a leaf that has grown, that has matured, versus one that hasn't. For example, these are very soft here still, so they are in the process of maturing. These have matured. So I would have to take a cutting here, and this is the issue. You know, you can see how long that is. To me, it's really just a waste because if I do take a cutting here, these leaves are going to make it maybe up to the, these, but very likely these very small leaves are not going to make it. If you have very small leaves that are growing and you take a cutting now, they're not going to make it. If you take a cutting here, you risk losing this entire vine from here onwards because these are really not mature. Neither are these, neither are these. The first pair of leaves that mature is here. I would find a different part of the plant or I would wait for these leaves to mature because there will be a period where they will kind of stop growing for a moment. It's not also bad if you really need to take a cutting. Of course, you can sacrifice that new growth. You have to kind of weigh your priorities here. What is more important to save the plant, to sell a cutting or to let it mature. And for me, if I'm saving a plant, then I will definitely risk the vine and the baby leaves. But if I'm selling, I, you know, it's not worth it in my opinion. And we need to take another one. So this is Hoya Carnosa Nova Ghost. This is going to be two leaves and one node, and we're gonna cut all the way here. So leaving enough of the vine to root. You can obviously take two nodes. Usually they are sold with two leaves and one node. That is another cutting here. So again, we will let that one dry out. We are not going to take a cutting of this plant because I'm not selling it, but, and also this is a bit dehydrated. That is maybe a recommendation. Do not really take cuttings from a dehydrated plant. Make sure to water your plant. Wait for the leaves to plump up because it will be much more difficult to root a cutting from a plant that has already been dehydrated because chances are the cutting will be dehydrated immediately as well. And that's really not great. Now, because this is a small leaved Hoya and I really draw a line at something like Lacunosa, that size is for me already small leaved. In those cases, I will take much larger cuttings. I don't really have a rule here. You kind of have to eyeball it, what you consider to be a decent cutting. For something like Chinihugensis, I would usually take this much depending on how much I have of the plant, or maybe even more, maybe this much, you know, all of this can be one cutting. You can also probably cut this into two cuttings. I would not even go for something like this. To me, that is very small. So again, I would just choose something that looks reasonable. With Lacunosas, I typically do two, three nodes, four nodes, depending again on the Lacunosa. I will never really do one node. In my opinion, that is 
ridiculously small for Lacunosa, so I will not do it. When it comes to Hoyas with larger leaves, buying something that has one leaf and one note is perfectly fine. That is not an issue, and that is how usually those are sold, because oftentimes with Hoyas with larger leaves, not with all of them, but with many of them, they will make one leaf per node, and then the other leaf will either grow or not grow later, who knows? For example, something like Svetlana, and this is not particularly large leaf, but I did buy this as one leaf, and one note cutting and then of course you can see that she has started to grow she's a bit slow she's not rushing so feel free to rush here we would love to see you grow bigger obviously this one cannot be cut even though it has a new growth here this is something that you don't touch i really don't cut my hoyas until they have several nodes so for example, if you really want to sell or share with your friend, if you bought a Hoya, wait for it until it has like four or five nodes and then you can take a cutting. Now, the question is what to do with my cuttings. And with my cuttings, I will not be doing anything right now. I will be doing something later. As I said, there are different methods to root your Hoya cuttings. I will be putting mine in this bag. I will spray the inside of the bag. This is a Kia Ziploc bag. And I will put some perlite on the bottom and put cuttings in there and then what you do you spray the inside of the bag you make sure that the perlite is also moist and then you blow some air in you, you need to close most of the bag you just leave a little bit open here and then you blow until there is air inside so let's just blow we're going for something like this and it doesn't really matter if the cutting is not fully submerged into perlite at least not in my opinion it has never made a difference they will root really well in something like this because it will be warm it will be humid inside and they will have moisture. You can also root just in the bag that you have sprayed with no potting mix. They will absolutely root, they will send out aerial roots, but I'm not gonna recommend, I mean, I'm sort of recommending, but I'm also not recommending. You don't, you know, just put some perlite in there, but that method will also work and it will all work really, really well with just air and a sprayed bag. I will show you now some propagations that are from this method bag and perlite that need to be potted two weeks ago. These have lost some air but there is still some air. You can sometimes I deflate them a bit to fit more in the cabinet and I have not had any issues. Some people say that the Hoya leaves should not touch the bag. Never had any issues with that. We have a cutting here one node one leaf of Hoya Piestolepis and as you can see we have a lot of roots here. And this was just some rogue cutting that I decided to take and grow it out before I sell it. So this is not something that, you know, I would recommend selling. Now, this is a Hoya that has made a lot of roots. Can actually probably be divided into two cuttings. Oh, she grew even a leaf in the bag. Wow. Should have potted that a long time ago. You can see the bottom has rooted a whole lot more. The top cutting, not so much, but there is enough. I really don't wait for a long time before I decide to pot the cuttings. You can also do the same thing in a propagation box. You can put perlite in propagation box. You can do it directly in the box or you can do it in pots, but you will need to fill out the box completely. You cannot put like two or three cuttings in the box, or at least I have not found that it works that well because they will really like a lot of moisture. And of course, the more cuttings you put in, the more moisture there will be. I don't even know what we have here. These have been put in here, I think, last week you can see they have started to root already and of course we have new growth before we even have new roots we have a cutting of hoya paradisa i believe that one is also rooting a little bit there the benefit of the bag is you don't have to really check on them and then we have another caudata and this is a slightly larger cutting of hoya caudata this is big green leaves or sold as big green leaves and we do have some roots there. So I would actually pot this up already because we want the roots to grow in their mix, in the mix that they will be growing in as soon as possible, or that's what I like to do. I don't like to put Hoya cuttings in one mix and then change the mix. I think that is very stressful. So we just really need them to get going. And then once you pot the cutting that has started to lightly root, you can then decide to put a bag on it or put it in the propagation box just to keep the moisture so the roots keep growing. And you do need to be careful when checking on the cuttings in perlite. I find the roots to be super fragile. I have broken roots many times even larger ones. And we have another bag of Hoyas I put in here last week. These are some of my new Hoyas. This is Hoya Arnotiana. That one actually grew quite... <laughs> okay, 
that's a lot. This is gonna be a bit complicated to pot because the stem is a little bit shorter, but that's fine. In this case, this was a gift and there was no possibility to take a longer cutting with longer stem. It complicates things a little bit when potting, but it's not the end of the world. In these cases, what I typically tend to do, I tend to pot them a little bit deeper. That is fine if you have a good mix. Some people say not to pot them a little bit deeper to make sure that the node is above the potting mix. Really, from my experience, I find that that really does not matter too much if your potting mix is good and if you don't overwater. But th th that's a lot of ifs here. Sometimes this will also happen and that's perfectly fine. That vine did not have any leaves. So we can just trim that if, of course, I've lost the scissors. If you also have a vine that is kind of long and there's like a lot of new growth, sometimes that will also die back. Not always, but sometimes it can happen. Another method to use is to just root them in water. I use RO water with a drop of organic, which is the seaweed, not a fertilizer, but like a vitamin. Of course, we all know that method works well. This is unwanted cutting of Hoya Brazil, Hoya Carnosa Brazil, that has lost the variegation. Sometimes this method is also very good when you have Hoyas that have dried out a lot during the shipping. I have Hoya Carnosa here, Affinity Carnosa from Hong Kong. This one, when it arrived, was very, very soft, but now, as you can see, it looks much better. There are roots. Some of them don't look so great because obviously the water evaporated several times because it's me. And this is why I don't like this method. You have to keep an eye on it and you may have to make sure that the water doesn't evaporate. I really don't like to root in water now because I'm a very clumsy person. I will nog that over. And then we have a couple of cuttings of Hoya latifolia that also have dried out several times and now they're tangled. Because it was so dehydrated, this is not how it looked like, maybe it was how it looked like, I don't even know. Because it was so dehydrated, I decided to do smaller cuttings. When you have a large cutting and it's really dehydrated, it's best to cut it into smaller pieces, especially if it's a big leaved Hoya. You can root larger cuttings, but it is going to take far longer. So it's better to kind of chop them into smaller ones, but viable ones. It gives you more chances and it will be much easier to hydrate that. So that is the water method. Works perfectly fine. If that is what you want to do, you do that. There is no issue with that. I find that even hoys that are notorious for rot will not rot in water, like Hoya undulata, that is perfectly fine to root in water. Some might not want to root in water. Those are the more uncommon Hoyas, something like Hoya medinillifolia. I've never tried it and I would never try to root in water because this Hoya is notoriously difficult to root as well. Mine, I rooted in pure pumice and I grow it in pure pumice. Of course, she decided to throw us this vine that is completely opposite of this one. Very beautiful, one of my favorites, if only she would bloom. But I rooted this in pure pumice and that is a good method if you are concerned. And this is a size that I kind of chose so you can see it's slightly larger. Now, the other one that is also notoriously difficult is Hoya Yingyangensis. This one kind of when it arrived, it was already a bit yellow and it's been a month. It's been over a month and she produced very little roots in pumice. She was bagged until recently. I did remove her from the bag because I did see some roots and I kind of put it in self-watering so she has moisture. I do kind of sometimes check them by very, very gently trying to move them, but very, very gently do not want to damage the roots to sort of see if they have rooted, especially with Hoyas that are known to be sensitive. In pond, it's good that you can kind of remove piece by piece very mindfully, very gently in the search for roots. Some people say this is much faster to root in moss. I have not tried it, obviously. So it would be great if this was a see-through pot, but I have used or broke all of my see-through pots that work with this. I will tell you one thing, try not to disturb your cuttings. Do not do this. Okay, I see that root is branching out. So that is excellent. That that took a long time. Some of these hoys will test you. Medinilfolia also took a month to root. This took over a month. Notoriously hard hoys to root, I would buy rooted, but again, it's also good to get this experience to kind of know what you're dealing with and to kind of know how quickly you need to react. If I saw anything happen to my Hoya Medinilfolia, I would react right away. So the pure pumice method works. It's not very risky method. It might take longer than moss, but it might be less risky than moss. So that's why I chose that. Other methods, I have rooted this in pawn. This is a Hoya for my friend Alex, Hoya for Bezzy allegedly, and she grew another leaf. 
probably needs to be repotted. We did not see that. Another great method to root your Hoyas, or a great potting mix, I guess, is half and half cocoa peat and perlite. I rooted this Hoya Polinera outer variegated in that mix. In that case, it will go into the prop box. You will use a pump sprayer. Make sure to coat that evenly or to get that evenly moist, but not dripping, soggy, you know, don't make mud out of it. Just make sure that it's like evenly moist and then you can put your cutting in that and into a propagation box and they will root really, really well, but do make sure that you have a lot of perlite there. Some people do root in pure cocoa peat. I don't, I've never tried it. I really would like something that's fluffy. For cuttings, it is very important to have a light mix. You actually can buy a specific mix that is for cuttings or for seedlings. I don't buy it, I just mix cocoa peat and perlite if I'm gonna go that way. Moss, of course, works well. This is Hoya solaniflora, the true Hoya solaniflora. This one was rooted in moss. You just stick it in moss. Make sure not to compress the moss. That's why a lot of them will rot in moss. Don't compress the moss. You can see probably a root there on the bottom. I don't mind rooting in moss. My issue is when you take it out of the propagation box, because this is also a propagation box or a propagation bag method, it will take a lot of care because moss will dry out pretty quickly and I'm not really good at keeping it moist. So I really should repot this soon to something that's slightly different. I also have I am 08. This one has also been rooted in moss and recently watered. And I might actually take another cutting because we do not like the bare vines. I don't think you should be afraid of moss. Moss can definitely work. You just need to make sure that you don't make it too wet and you have to make sure that you don't compress it too much. Coconut chips will work as well. This is Insularis and that has been rooted in cocoa chips. It has grown a new leaf there. So that's a great method as well. A lot of the potting mixes, as I said, will work without issue. It's really just learning the appropriate ratio of um, air, moisture, and the mix. All of the methods will require some sort of a bag unless you're just rooting in the water. The rest of them do require a bag or a propagation box, or you can root in a grow tent. I have done that in a grow tent, even though sometimes humidity can be slightly lower in the grow tent, so I would opt for a box. And sometimes if you are rooting in water, a cutting that has been very dehydrated, what I will do, what I have done, is put a bag on it. And I found that that uh, just hydrates it much, much faster. This is Hoya undulata. You will see her several times in the coming days. She has opened the flowers, so we're happy about that. This one I rooted in bark and very, very little moss. You can see the bark there, and she's doing really, really well in this so far. It's in a self-watering pot, but you can root straight in bark. So it just really matters that it's not a mix that is way too dense and that will be way too moist. How to water your cutting? If you're putting it in a propagation box, it is most likely that you will not need to water it except for that initial watering. Of course, make sure to check every couple of weeks. I don't open my propagation boxes every day. I know that some people do recommend that. I don't do it. I have not found any issues with that method. I just check them in a couple of weeks to see how they're going and if they need to be watered or sprayed. I typically just spray the box, you know, from the from the above kind of like rain and that's enough. So they don't really need a whole lot of water. The mix needs to stay moist, but it does not need to be super wet and it cannot be dry. They're not gonna root in something that is dry or it will take much, much longer. I've seen people root in LECA in a propagation box and the LECA was bone dry. You know when you see the LECA bone dry? I don't really know uh, what people expect. So what are the requirements to root a cutting successfully? First of all, you don't need an abundance of light. You can just put them in bright and direct light. I put them on the bottom of the tent, on the bottom of my Rodsta cabinet where I have eight watt LED hardware store light. It's not a lot of light. I would put them even on my desk. I've done that before. There are no grow light. I mean, there are grow lights in the distance, but it really is not super bright. That is not the most important part. The most important part is warmth. It will really take a long time to root something if it's not warm enough. The risks are higher. So warmth is necessary. And to get through that, you can use a heat mat. They work really, really well. They're very cheap. They do spend electricity, but it's not that huge of an investment. And I would use that in winter or in spring. 
In summer, you really don't need it. You're gonna cook your cuttings if you use it in summer. So just be careful. You know, if your ambient temperature is like 22, you're fine. You don't need to use a heat mat, but if you're getting into 18 or 19 degrees, I would use a heat mat in that scenario. Obviously you will need humidity and you will need a mix that is moist. So those are really important to have humidity, lots of it, the more the better and for your cutting to be in a moist mix, or again, as I mentioned before, it can just be in a bag with nothing else there. And that's kind of similar to aeroponics method in ways that it's actually not, but you know, kind of similar if we abstract it enough. As I said, a lot of the Hoyas are very, very easy to root. There are some exceptions, and those are Hoya Medinolifolia, Hoya Yin Yang Gensis that I showed you, but also Hoya Loki, Hoya Multiflora. Hoya Loki and Hoya Multiflora, I would really root them in a potting mix. They're kind of specific because a lot of the Hoyas, when you root them, they're going to push out roots along the stem. Let's imagine this is slightly larger. If I were to cut this here, for example, it would root all the way along the stem. You can feel the bumps already. You can feel the aerial roots in a lot of these Hoyas. Hoya Loki and Hoya Multiflora are not gonna do that. They are only going to push out roots at the place where they were cut, and that's it. Eventually more roots will grow, but that is where they will start to push out roots. So they're kind of specific there. I found that they take a long time to root, Hoya Multiflora and Loki. They're not so difficult, but it will look a little bit scary temporarily when you try to root them because they tend to kind of flop because, again, very thin-leaved Hoyas. Undulata, so easy to root. That is not an issue at all. You can root it in most anything and it's really not a problem. I actually find a lot of these Hoyas that are very expensive are not so difficult to root. Some might take more time to take off, but many of them are not. If you are genuinely worried about rooting a Hoya cutting, my advice to you is to look in the Hoya groups. You will more often than not find someone else's experience. That's how I found out about Hoya medinillifolia and how to root that plant and similarly for Hoya yingyangensis. You really don't have to worry about the mass-produced Hoya the Carnosas, Kentiana, Wayeti, those are not an issue. Hoya Bella, Linearis, so you don't have to worry for those. But again, if you're going into the unknown territory like Medinella Folia, in that case, do look into Hoya groups and most likely you will find the answer there. Now we're gonna get into some tips and to kind of wrap up this video because it's getting very long, I can talk a lot about rooting cuttings. When your cuttings arrive and they have traveled a long time and you see that they're kind of dehydrated, slightly dehydrated, or even if they're a lot dehydrated, it's not a bad idea to put them in a bowl of water and kind of submerge them in room temperature water. And you can add a bit of sugar to that water or you can add something, I don't add sugar, because I'm not never sure about the quantities, but I don't think that it really matters. Or you can add something like algamic. I use algamic and I kind of submerge them and let them be in that bowl of water for half an hour, sometimes more. Some growers go for, you have to kind of wait. I've never tried that, but I don't think it would be an issue. You're kind of allowing them to hydrate a bit. They're still gonna look dehydrated. They're not gonna plump up, but it does help. It will be much easier for them to kind of plump up in the days to come. If you get a cutting that is super dehydrated, I would in most cases recommend water, but not in all. Again, look up in the Hoya groups if that Hoya can be rooted in water, because not all of them can. A lot of them can, but not all of them will root in water. So if your Hoya arrives and it's very dehydrated, it will take a little more care you will have to make sure that it is really in high humidity because it is just not gonna work. Even if you put it in the cup of water or whatever, I would bag that as well. I would maybe bag it rather than choose a propagation box because it's gonna be much easier for you to maintain super high humidity in the bag versus the propagation box because the boxes are larger. So that's kind of my advice there. Some Hoyas will benefit from being pinned down, something like Hoya Serpens, Cortesi, Teng Chungenses. Those are going to root much faster and it's several nodes if you pin them down. You can pin down a lot of the Hoyas, it's not an issue. If you're working with something like Hoya Kentiana or Wayeti, you can also pin that down, Hoya Species Affinity Bertonia, and then they will start to grow from each of the nodes. For some of them, of course, there is no reason to do that, but if the cutting is 
and stable, you can also pin it down. That really helps with stability. It's very frustrating. I get super annoyed when they keep falling out of the pot and sometimes you don't even notice right away and then it's more stress for the cutting. So you'll kind of see when you start to pot your cuttings if they need to be pinned down or not, but it is beneficial and do not hesitate to do it. All right, that is the end of the video. I have surrounded myself with Hoyas and that actually does not make me happy because it is a mess. I always make a mess. The cuttings that we have cut are almost ready. I would leave them for maybe half an hour longer and then they're just gonna go into a bag, which I also have managed to lose. That's fine. The Hoyas that are ready to be potted will not be potted today. We all know that. I don't need to lie to you. Let me know how you root your Hoya cuttings if you have some advice that I have not mentioned. But I do think this was quite a lot of talk about cuttings. I think it's probably sufficient. I don't think there is the best method. I think many methods can work. You just need to select a method that you're very comfortable with and you know, stick with that method. Get to know it, ins and outs, and that's that. In my opinion, putting them directly in the potting mix in which you will grow them is probably the best method. But again, we don't always have the space for that right away. That's why some of mine are in the bags with perlite. Sometimes we don't have the time and that's very easy to put the cut in the bag, put some perlite in, spray it, close it, and you're done. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you very soon with another video, which I will most likely record right away after this one. But I need to clean up because I will make more mess by bringing more Hoyas. This room is way too small for all of us. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons, my three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moyn, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy, Catherine Molina, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Deepanjali Rao, Farah, Gina K, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Husband Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavan Dinot, Kara, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelso, Kiwi Mochi, Kristen Sherwood, Lifland Staff, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelina, Novosatsky, Mario West, Morris B, Martina, Alif Day, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nina Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ, Plant Druid, Planting with Nat, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Roos, Saloma Dahl, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya Tessa Martins, Tristan Thomas, The One True Kyle, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green Youth, The Wallamut, Zordrama, and Zlokov Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Andy H, Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brana Phillips, Colleen Coyle Levi, Kilon, Claudia L, Erin Keenan, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Plantolenia Ringlov, and Tang Watana Sriakul. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Kari, Christina Greengrass, Constance, Couture Helvetica, Edith W, Emilia Bronson, Jonna Pearson, Jolly Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lauren Ansubramanian, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chinmuller. <laughs>